Hello, my name is Chrissy Hodges. I'm a peer support specialist, particularly for OCD, and also an OCD referral and resource consultant worldwide to help connect people to therapists who can treat OCD and resources that can help supplement them on their way to recovery. I also am the author of Pure OCD, The Invisible Side of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. So tonight I'm gonna do a video, and thank you for joining me by the way. Um, tonight I'm gonna do a video that some people might get a little irritated about, and that's okay too. And I'd love to hear what you feel like in the comments. Um, but about exposure response prevention and why doing exposures and ERP on your own without professional guidance is dangerous. So first I wanna to talk to you about a little disclaimer. I really can only talk about my own personal experience. I do ERP now on my own. However, I was treated by Dr. Stephen Phillipson in New York. I went through therapy with him and took a sexual intrusive thought all the way to extinction. So I understand how the process works. I was taught by him what it means to have the type of brain that I have, which is an OCD brain that malfunctions. And I also was shown the different types of tools and techniques you can use in ERP in order for me to do that on my own. So I understand what I can and can't do, but I also wanna emphasize that I understand when I need help and support, I will reach out for a therapist. And I would not do something on my own that I did not feel like I was capable of guiding myself on. But just to say again, I have been through successful ERP with an OCD expert. What is exposure response prevention therapy? This is evidence-based therapy that is used to treat OCD. This is a behavioral therapy. It's part of cognitive behavioral therapy where a professional teaches you the way you have been responding to your OCD intrusive thoughts and how to respond differently. They do this in a way where they do it slowly to teach you how to change your behaviors and over time you learn to habituate to some of the intrusive thoughts and the need to do compulsions as a response to the intrusive thoughts. So here's what, that's what ERP is, but this is what happens. People, and I can't speak for anything other than the type of OCD I have, which is pure OCD, sexual violent, blasphemous, intrusive thoughts. Uh, typically, it can range though all over. Um, and mental compulsions. But a lot of times we live with this type of OCD for years and years and years and years. Some people not even knowing they have OCD like myself. Other people just not knowing where to go or they try therapists that don't work because they're doing talk th therapy and EMDR and DBT and all this crap that doesn't work. So when compulsions, when you're doing compulsions to try to neutralize these horrible intrusive thoughts, when they stop working, when you're no longer feeling okay about how to control your own mind, because you can't control your own mind when you have OCD until you learn how to, the next best thing is the internet. <laughs> Thank goodness it wasn't around when I was in the full-blown OCD, I would have I would have been a Google whore. I'm telling you, I only had AOL, so luckily it wasn't. It it couldn't be a full-blown compu compulsion at that point. But here's how it backfires, because doing ERP on your own can backfire. Now, before I go into this, I do want to tell you that I know that there are people out there that are like, I can't afford ERP. People won't take my insurance. I am over here in this remote place and et cetera and et cetera. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about some things you can do in the meantime until you can get the means or things you can talk to people that do ERP to help try to figure out how to get the right treatment. So just know I am going to address those issues. I consulted with Matt Miles, who is the owner of Effective OCE Treatment here in Denver. Great therapist. I talked to him about this because I, 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 and I do want you to know that I don't think that there aren't minds out there that could be like, oh, look, I'm going to read about exposure response prevention and I'm going to do it. But I think that with OCD, it's few and far between. 
And the reason why is because we get so very much entrenched in, in what we're doing in these compulsions that it, it seems counterintuitive to do what ERP is teaching us. But also, it is a powerful medical, medical illness. This is not something you just thought up or something that you did wrong and all of a sudden it hit you. This is a medical illness and you got this medical illness. You need medical treatment. So when I talked to Matt Miles, I, I asked him, I said, I'm doing this video and I'm going to talk about how ERP is the way to go. And, and you know, what are your thoughts? And, and he said, well, here's the thing. If I have an injury in my knee and I decide that I'm going to go to the gym because I read something on the internet and I know that this is very different, but either way, I read something on the internet that said, if I do this exercise, it might help. And if I do this and for this person, it did this and I might do this, or I could go to a physical therapist or a doctor who can show me what is safe and what is not safe for an injury that I may have. Then I can start exploring, okay, then I shouldn't do this and I should do this and how does this work? And then you can build on that. ERP therapy is not a therapy that's gonna last your lifetime when you're with the right therapist and you are committed, okay? Two of the most important points, when you're committed and when you're with the right therapist. You are not gonna be in a lifetime worth of therapy. Bulk of the work is done on your own. But when I get injured, I'm gonna go straight to my PT before I go to the gym because some meathead on the internet, no offense to meatheads, meathead on the internet says, oh, when I had this injury and it hurt right here, then I did leg extensions. I'm gonna trust the expert. She doesn't, I don't have to see her 800 times. She just said, I think this is safe. I think this is not based on my knowledge of what the knee is. So try this. And if that doesn't work, we'll explore other options. So I was taught by an expert on how to deal with my OCD with ERP. I want to go ahead and preface the rest of this video with this. I have a lot of people that that write to me and um, I do peer support with and they are interested in me creating a hierarchy for them or because I've went through ERP, I must be an expert. I know how ERP works and I can help. No, I cannot. I will not. It's not ethical for my profession. It's not ethical for my certification. I do work with clients, however, and will work with their therapists or will help them with their ERP exposures and support them while they're doing them. But I always heed to the expert. The expert to me is someone who specializes in OCD. I cannot take their place. Anyone on the internet claiming that because they've been through ERP that they think you should do X, Y, and Z is a fraud. Do not listen to people who are not experts and are not trained in treating OCD just because they've been through ERP. It's bullshit. I'll just go ahead and say that. And they could set you up for very dangerous results. Why? Because the brain is complex. The people who specialize in OCD understand dual diagnosis, comorbidity, trauma, things that affect how ERP is going to work. And I'm going to go into what are some of the dangers of just seeing people on the internet saying, you should just go expose yourself and everything will be great. How detrimental that could be to your recovery. First of all, we are used to instant gratification. <laughs> Anyone watching this with, ER with OCD is like, yes. Why do you think we developed compulsions in the first place? It is immediate relief. It doesn't matter how temporary because we will do that compulsion 8,000 times a day just to feel better. Am I right? <laughs> so instant gratification is what we invest in when we have OCD. It is hard to resist, isn't it? I mean, 
You've got an intrusive thought. It's like, I want to feel better right now. Okay, what do I need to do? Do I need to avoid, reassure? What do I, do I need to Google? What do I need to do? Okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, so that's what we're used to. ERP is telling us to do the opposite. So I don't know a lot of rational people who could just be like, oh, okay, I'm 10 years in to instant gratification with these intrusive thoughts, but all of a sudden, so-and-so told me on the internet I should just go expose myself and everything will be better and it'll be easy because it's not. Because when your anxiety spikes up too high, we are conditioned to do a compulsion we're conditioned. It is so difficult to say, oh, I'm going to resist. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. It's almost, I don't want to say it's impossible, but it's almost impossible when you've been conditioned for as long as we do, because we have been conditioned to be intolerant to anxiety. We can't sit in the fire and believe that we're not going to get burned. This brings me to the most important point, the most important point of why you should not do ERP without an expert guiding you. Why all we hear is exposure, exposure, exposure response prevention, exposure, exposure. I only care about the E. All I have to do is expose myself. Oh, okay, let me go expose myself. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. The most important piece is the response prevention. Otherwise, you're just engaging in self-torture. So just start saying that out loud. Self-torture, self-torture. I'm going to expose myself to things that I don't want to expose myself to. And this is supposed to help. Isn't this supposed to help? Why am I not feeling good? I feel like shit. I feel worse. Oh my God, this is stupid therapy. I'm never going to do it again. I'm losing hope. I'm losing faith that I can ever get better. And we already have the secondary fear that what if therapy works for everybody but me. Don't do it on your own. Response prevention is the most important part of exposure response prevention. It means exactly what it sounds like. You prevent the typical response that you're conditioned to have. There's the exposure. What do we want to do? Instant gratification. I want instant gratification. <laughs> I, need to, I need to resist. I need to resist. If you have a professional guiding you, if you have a professional making sure you can do these exposures at a rate that you can tolerate, that response prevention isn't going to feel like you're burning up in a blazing fire. It's going to suck. <laughs> but they're not going to throw you in the deep end of the water if you have HOCD being like, oh, just watch gay porn over and over and over, you'll habituate. No, 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 no. That's just self-torture. Because you don't know what it means to have response prevention. The other piece of that is half of us, when we, when we finally figure out what we have and we're seeking treatment, we don't even know what our compulsions are anymore. When I started therapy... My therapist was pointing out all these compulsions. I'm like, that's not a compulsion. <laughs> that's just my everyday life. He's like, mm-hmm. No, it is a compulsion. My whole life became a compulsion. I was avoiding. I was reassurance seeking. I was ruminating. I didn't even know what I was doing. It was a compulsion. Again, instant gratification, but also more importantly, survival. We adapt these compulsions to survive a medical chronic illness. So on your own, it's really difficult for you to be able to identify this is a compulsion because, oh, that feels good, but I want to do that. So again, probably the biggest thing is why ERP is challenging and you should beware of doing it on your own is because it's hard to know what response prevention is without a therapist to guide you. Okay, so here's, here's and I, just to touch off what I just said. Another thing is, and I, I just mentioned the HOCD, is when you start reading about ERP, you, your brain wants you to think, oh my God, okay, there's a, there's a cure to the, or not a cure, there's a, you, you, can, you can do this and you can get better. So all you have to do is exposure, exposure response prevention. Okay, so, but, but the problem is, 
is that we think exposure and we think, oh, okay, well, exposure means um, if I have POCD, that means I need to just, I need to go like sit in a mall and, and be around all these kids. I'm, I'm sorry. Someone who is deep into pedophilia OCD, that's too extreme. It's too extreme, especially without clinical guidance. You're going to go there and your anxiety is going to spike up so high. You're not going to know what to do. You're going to have to do a compulsion. And then you're right back over at square one. And then you're like, I'm never doing that again. And then so much for ERP. And then, you know, nothing ever works for me. And all these other things start to come in, like losing hope and not wanting to reach out because it was so torturous. So the beauty about being with someone who is a, an expert is that they aren't going to start you out on something extreme. They are going to use your experience to help you create a plan moving forward so you can do these exposures. But each week, your brain learns these little steps and strides on what are the things that behaviorally are keeping you stuck. And you work those out as you get into the bigger, bigger exposures. We go to extremes. We're black and white people. That's what OCD is, right? We're instant gratification. We're black and white. It's either this way or it's that way. And I want to feel relieved now. We're difficult people. <laughs> so if someone says exposures will help you get better, you know you're going to go to the extreme. You know, you have violent intrusive thoughts. Oh, I need to go to extreme. Well, I'm just going to pick up a knife and I'm going to walk around swinging it at my family. Oh my God, you're going to scare the shit out of them, number one. And number two, you're going to scare yourself because you don't know how to bring the anxiety down, number one, because it's too much. Number two, you don't understand response prevention, which is what a therapist can help you with. The other thing is... Habituation takes a long time. Habituation does not take, I'm going to do an exposure today and all of a sudden everything's great and I should feel better tomorrow. No, 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 no. I use this example a lot of times, but I know it's not the equivalent of what it means to have a mental illness. But if someone, if you decide to sign up for a marathon six months from now, you would not go out tomorrow and run 26.2 miles if you weren't conditioned. Sorry, but you wouldn't. And you can't even see that that's possible if you haven't trained for it. There is no difference in that and being able to habituate and get used to changing the behavior of your brain. You have to teach it how to do it. It has to build. Habituation takes more than one or two times of exposure. So if you read on the, or watch the internet and someone's saying, oh, you should just do this, and you go watch gay porn for three days in a row and your anxiety spikes to a 10 and you have no idea how to bring it down but do compulsions, you're gonna think ERP is a bunch of shit. <laughs> but you know what? It's not if you aren't, if you are doing it with a therapist, they will know how to help you learn how to habituate to get to those more extreme things that aren't going to feel as horrific as they would if you were doing them the first week. A good example of a good example of trying to do ERP therapy on your own and I want to say this because I want you to understand the severity of ER or OCD. OCD is not just some flippant illness that you have that one day it's bad and the other day, it's going to be so much, you know, so much better because it's not that big of a deal. This is a chronic mental illness that will paralyze you if you don't get help, if you don't get the right help. So this may seem a little flippant to you, but let's say you have carpal tunnel syndrome and you just don't want to invest the time, the energy, the money into a specialist or whatever, and you think, well, I'll just Google some videos on how to do this, and I think I should be able to do it myself. Yeah, I can sharpen a knife. You know, I have this video in front of me. I'll just do it step by step. I think I should be able to do it. To me, that's what it is like, thinking you can take a chronic 
medical mental illness into your own hands without getting expert help, without having someone who has studied, who understands, who can see the complexity of what you're dealing with, who can honor and validate the trauma you've been through, and who can help normalize the experience that you have had, that if you are at this point, it has wrecked your life and your self-esteem. You not only want that expert to help take you to recovery, you want someone to say, I understand what you're going through. I have treated this. I can help and validate what you have been through. You don't want to try to do this on your own and fail and then set yourself up in the future to not want to try again. So I do want to end this with, I know ERP therapy is not cheap. I know that it is not feasible for everybody because of money or because of location or means of anything. I know that. So I don't want you to, to listen to this video and then go, she just doesn't get it. She doesn't understand. So I want to, I want to give some suggestions. If you are looking for a therapist, first of all, I can help find you one in your area or someone that can do therapy across state or country lines via telehealth. So I can help with that. So visit ChrissyHodges.com um, or TreatmentForOCD.com. Call therapists that specialize in OCD. Ask them, if, if, if money is the issue, ask them if they have a sliding scale. Ask them what they can do to get the treatment. See what their suggestions are. If they say nothing, keep calling OCD specialists to find out. See if they can refer you to someone that does. If you do find someone and you can't afford to go every single week, Ask them if they'll do once a month and load you up with homework or whatever it is that you can do to help bridge that gap. Also, ask them about insurance. Do you take insurance? If you don't, what can I do? How do I file a single payer agreement? How can I talk to my insurance about getting them to cover you? You know, be active. Figure out how to get the help that you need. The bulk of the work for ERP happens at home. It doesn't happen in the sessions. The therapist guides you on what to do, but the bulk happens at home. Other things that you can do, supplemental in the meantime, until ERP is an option. There's peer support. I provide peer support. Shannon Shy provides peer support. We're, su we're certified peer supporters here in the U.S. Um, Go on to uh, No CD, the app. Um, that has an SOS function. It has groups where you're not, you, you can talk to other people and you're not alone. Um, support groups in your area, support groups online, online groups on Facebook, online groups on social media. Um, some are good, some are not so good. But either way, there is something to be said about knowing that you're not alone. I know it's not, I know it's not treatment, but I, I do know that there are dark times and sometimes just knowing someone else is there until you can get to the appropriate treatment. These are things you can do. There are workbooks that you can buy for OCD. Um, work through a workbook. When you get to the glitches in the workbook, reach out to an OCD therapist and say, I'm, I'm, I've gotten to this point and I need help. You know, do I have to do a full six months of one week a session? You know, how often, you know, can I just see you like once a month or once every three weeks or something and do the bulk of the work through a workbook? You know, Jonathan Grayson has a workbook. John Hirschfeld has the mindfulness workbook. There are, there are so many things out there that you can do supplemental on the way to when you can get to an ERP therapist. So I don't want you to think that I don't understand how hard it is to get therapy. I, but I also know that people put mental health on the back burner. 
You know, it's like, let me just survive another six months because it'll go away. And they don't invest in their mental health. I do know that too. So yes, if you're coming to videos a lot or you're, you know, doing compulsions or every three months or every three weeks, you're at the same low that you're at, just hanging on, but you're not willing to invest in your mental health and get the appropriate treatment, you're still gonna keep coming back here. It's time. Invest in therapy that works. Lastly, I just wanna leave you with this. OCD can feel like the most paralyzing. When you sink back into an OCD cycle, and we all know this. It is like you wake up and it is gloom and doom. It is, it is like the cloud has taken over. You, you can't see color anymore and you feel absolutely paralyzed. And I was meeting with a client earlier this week. And he felt that way. And I could, it was palpable. I understand. I, rem, I know. I remember what it feels to feel that way when I'm in a cycle. But here's the thing. We forget that OCD feels that way, but it doesn't have to stay that way. Keep moving, keep living, keep doing what you're doing because OCD wants you to stay paralyzed. It's going to tell you that you can't do anything, but you can. You can push back. And yes, you can want, you can come watch videos. I know it's probably compulsion, but it's okay. If that's what motivates you to get out and live and find treatment that works or push through another cycle. It will always tell you, you can't win. But I am here to tell you that you can win. You can push through this. Get the treatment that works so you can get back on your feet. I know the biggest fear is what if treatment doesn't work for me? It works for everybody else. What if I really don't have OCD and I am really X, Y, and Z? Okay, okay, okay. But try it. Just try it. You are worth it. You deserve it. You deserve it. So I want to end there. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. I do know that a lot of people feel like they want to do the exposure response prevention on their own. And maybe people can succeed. Maybe. I know I couldn't. <laughs> There's no way I would have been able to be pushed far, th far enough. But maybe you'll consider getting with a therapist who can help with that complex organ and get you on the right path quicker than it would take you the months and months of self-torture you'll endure without an expert. Thank you for being here. If you need to contact me for consultations for referrals or peer support, head over to chrissyhodges.com, ocd.chrissy at gmail.com, or treatmentforocd.com. Have a wonderful weekend and um, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I will not be doing a video until after Thanksgiving, so mwah, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. And those that do not celebrate Thanksgiving, happy week, and I will see you next time. Bye.